Review time. This is the uh, RF Explorer signal generator. It does uh, 24 megahertz to uh, 6 gigahertz, so it's an RF signal generator. Uh, battery powered. Uh, has a USB charging port, but it'll run for hours on an internal battery. Uh, cost me uh, just under $200, which is a fairly attractive price for uh, such a high frequency range. Uh, in terms of functionality, it has a, an RF generator, which is a fixed frequency. You can do a sweeping of frequencies, which is good for... Um, when you're trying to characterize things like filters, an amplitude sweep, which is great when you're trying to characterize antennas and their gain, and then some utility functions below. Uh, there's no frequency modulation uh, in this uh, unit, and as I can tell, it's a fairly straightforward uh, generator. I guess no surprise given the fact that it uh, comes in at $200. So I set the generator to generate a 40 megahertz signal, and uh, of course I connected to a spectrum analyzer. Let's just turn it on and uh, do a peak search. Uh, and sure enough, this is coming at 40 megahertz, which is just fine. Uh, unfortunately, you can see a significant uh, peak here. It looks like a harmonic. And it doesn't matter how much you increase or change the frequency, these harmonics seem to always be there. And uh, that's an indication that this generator isn't producing a sine wave. Uh, see, I'm lowering the frequency here. Now we can see a third harmonic. So, uh, And this doesn't matter what frequency I choose. Uh, I could go up to a higher frequency, and uh, it seems to be there uh, no matter what the uh, frequency is. Okay, come up to an oscilloscope now. The generator is uh, obviously generating into this. This is a 50 ohm termination resistor. The manual is quite explicit. It has to be terminated. Uh, sometimes with RF generators, if you have an open load, what happens is you uh, get a reflection back in and actually can destroy the uh, RF generator. So, good practice. We, of course, clearly see this isn't a sine wave. Uh, there's obviously a lot of distortion here and here. I'm the lowest possible setting for voltage. Let me just move it up a bit and see if that changes it. No, it doesn't matter. With amplitude, we get this sort of... Um, distortion here and here. And of course, this is picked up as a harmonic on the spectrum analyzer. Problem with an RF analyzer, you really want a, a straightforward sine wave. It really makes it simpler to use, so uh, not too solid. Now, it is possible that the, um, the equipment can't drive this 50 ohm load, even though it suggests it. So let me just pull it off. I've gone to the very lowest power setting, so it's uh, not super dangerous to try this. Yeah, unfortunately, the distortion's here. This is consistent. I read some reviews on the internet. Uh, people also have them. So I don't think this is unique to my unit. So to give some indication just how noisy the generator is, we're sitting about 423 megahertz. Uh, and here's the peak there. My uh, spectrum analyzer says 429 megahertz. But you can see all this junk sitting here. Uh, and it's actually fairly significant. Uh, the next peak at uh, 1.2 gigahertz, that's a 1.7 gigahertz, 851 giga, uh, megahertz. So it uh, definitely is not producing a, a sine wave. And uh, that's kind of disappointing, of course, because that really is a function of a uh, spectrum uh, signal generator. So one use of an RF generator is to uh, characterize um, filters, and what you want to do is the generator has to produce a flat frequency. Um, I'll put the uh, generator onto a sweep functionality, and basically it's running from 100 megahertz to 400 megahertz. Uh, you can see, of course, all the spurs here, and it's very difficult to see what the generator is doing. But what you can do is you can put it onto a, a max hold function, and uh, from there you can get um, an ability to see what's going on in terms of its uh, spectrum. Now you can see this thing starts tracing down here, uh, just get the marker going and we can find out the frequency it starts at uh, is around 100 megahertz, that's where I set it, uh, and it runs up to uh, 500 megahertz where it ends. And you can see of course it's actually quite flat, so it's, that's good in the sense that uh, the frequencies that you're asking for, it's producing a nice flat uh, response. But of course uh, the problem with this generator has all this uh, going on here, and you can see if you leave it long enough it looks like it creates almost like a steps of, uh, of noise. And unfortunately, the spurs are fairly high up. They're um, see here, minus 30 dBm here, and then you go down here, it's minus 40 dBm, so 10 dBm. Um, so fairly significant sidebands. And uh, like a really expensive uh, uh, generator, of course, won't have this. It'll generate a nice pure sine wave. This will be uh, completely blank. So here's another example I set up to sweep between 100 and 102 megahertz. And of course, it's, it's nice and cheerfully going along here, nice and smooth. But of course, you can see these tremendous uh, bars coming up. And again, if I turn on the trace to a max hold, uh, you can get some sort of sense of the you know, just um, astonishing sidebends. So you can see it'll trace nicely, and very flat at least here. So it's actually for characterization of filters, it's entirely usable. Uh, but you can see, of course, all this uh, side stuff. Uh, the basic fundamental problem, I suspect, is this uh, analyzer wants to crack it open. Uh, it doesn't have any proper output filtering. It's uh, probably very simplistic. Uh, because there's no way they could have created such an inexpensive tool and then had all the uh, glorious filtering that's actually required. Let's uh, take it apart. So as one might expect, there's not a lot of components in the assembly because it's uh, selling at a, a low price. 
the keyboard on this side, the LCD on this side, and uh, there's a switch for power. Yeah. And this side, of course, here's the lithium ion battery. There's a, a USB bridge. It's the Silicon Labs 2102. Uh, there's a PIC micro which controls the whole unit. That's quite appropriate. You don't need a lot of compute power. Uh, the reality is the instrument is basically contained in the, this device here. It's the Maxim 2870. It's a single chip uh, PLL which uh, goes uh, from 24 to uh, 600, that's probably 6,000 megahertz. And of course, undoubtedly that's what the designer saw on the data sheet that they built the instrument around this component. And this part here appears to be either an RS switch or potentially an RS switch with a slight amplifier. But uh, what you don't see, I'll just zoom in a second, PLL here, but there's not a lot of filtering functions here, nor of course any RS switches to switch into different bands. And that's of course why you got all those spurs. Uh, PLLs do produce spurs, um, and uh, unless you put some filter on this side here, and of course that's quite expensive because you're definitely into the RF domain, um, that really does seem to be lacking. Uh, let's see, there's a very small crystal here, hopefully it's temperature compensated, not sure. Same thing though, ideally you want like an ovenized oscillator or something as well. Uh, but then again, of course, you know, you can't compare a thousands of dollars instrument to a $200 instrument. Uh, but I think this is here basically where the circuitry starts to uh, uh, fall down. Uh, let's see, there's a little adapter here for an expansion, which I don't think was ever offered by the company, couldn't see anything on the website. And, uh, oh, uh, it's funny things, like this is obviously the ground, and of course it connects to this metal here, which is kind of okay. But then uh, you can sort of see that uh, they don't have a single point grounding going on, they basically just flood the plane. And I don't know if they've isolated the analog output of this device here from the noisy digital circuits here. And whether or not, if anything, thumping here on the digital domain will get carried across in the RF domain. Because I'm not seeing really strict uh, planes, uh, floats. You can see that if you put a, a board under a um, bright light, you can sort of see where the floods are and whether or not they've isolated it. So there's some evidence there might be some flooding here. But still, like all these digital signals crossing into this domain here. And then this RF connector on the same uh, ground domain. Um, it implies you could get noise basically coupled in. And, uh, of course, that would be a, a poor practice. But um, uh, there we go. That was the uh, RF Explorer and what's inside of it. Certainly, I'll get some use out of it because I can uh, definitely make... Uh, I can work around this limitation of the spurs. I can put external filters on or there's situations where that's not important. However, uh, if you're using this instrument, for example, and you had to put an antenna on this to, say, uh, tune up a receiver, uh, you'd be spraying RF all over the band. And, of course, that would be a real no-no. So you'd have to really be aware this thing uh, doesn't produce just the uh, frequency you're asking for, but uh, quite a few harmonics.